Which is now time to call the March 10th, 2014 meeting of the Cleveland County Board of Education to order. And I'm going to ask uh, Ms. Miller if she will lead us in the pledge to the
thank the board for the time tonight. I just have a couple of questions that I would like to present to the board. Uh, if I understood from the paper, we are paying approximately fifteen thousand dollars for a consultant firm to be looking for a superintendent. Did I read that being correct? And my question is, why is Dr. Bowles and the people we have, why are we not have someone to hire to be an assistant to, to, to go into this where we don't have to spend fifteen thousand dollars to look for someone? With our teachers now, a lot of the new ones that's went into the school system want to make twenty nine, thirty thousand dollars a year. So we're going to take fifteen thousand dollars to look for someone, and we don't have anybody within this system that is capable of running this system. And that's my only question to throw to the board. Thank, Thank you, Mr. Price. We normally don't answer those questions. Okay, we take under time. advisement what you what you comment on. I understand that perfectly, but our aim is to provide high quality education. And that fifteen thousand dollars would be taking away teachers and administrators, all sorts of personnel to carry out that process. So therefore, we feel like that money is well spent. Thank you. Thank you. Yvette Grant.
Mr. Chairman, school board members, and for the opportunity to speak. You know, the last three years, we have a lot of negative publicity. The newspaper in 2011, 2012, has been filled with the credit card scandal, the SBI investigation, the state auditor's investigation. We also had um, charter schools versus Cleveland County, the lawsuit, um, but that we lost, where the money was not paid to the charter schools and so forth. So we've got a lot to overcome with this negative things that have gone on. So now in looking ahead for a new superintendent and a new star, we got to settle some of these things first. But I noticed in a January 28th newspaper article, when you all were interviewed by the star, you were asked the question, what would you like to see in the superintendent? And some of you said you would like to see somebody who is involved in the community. And that's well and good. But in looking back at some of the things, I'm wondering if involvement in the community has not been a good thing. I noticed that our present superintendent was able to take a part-time job, teach according to the newspaper article in January 31st, of 2014, it said he had been an adjunct professor at Barton Webb for two years. And I noticed that he headed up United Way as vice chairman from July of 2010 to June of 2011, and chairman from July of 2011 to 2012. He headed up Cleveland County Chamber as vice chair from January of 11 through the whole year, and as chairman. January of 2012 for the whole year. While this is well and good to be involved in this, but in looking at all the stuff that was going on here at the same time, when, when you all select somebody, I would like for you to get somebody who is totally focused on the school system and totally involved in the school system, not to take a part-time job, or not to head up 501c3s, nonprofits, but somebody, this is a full-time job and it is a 24-7. And that is my wish for the superintendent, is to see somebody whose focus is totally there. Thank you. Thank you. Checkbook to write nights and weekends that you're going to work. Then you have an 
$800 in, in, in county travel. How do you determine if that's $800? How much is it really? How do you come up with these figures that it's $800 in travel? And then there's additional money for out of county travel. So the $148,400 doesn't seem like that's a total package. That's more add on. So, how do you, what ceiling do you put on nights and weekends? And uh, what is the total gross of this position? Thank you. As I've said before, we don't respond. We just be able to take your comments under advisement. I will say we want to get the best superintendent we can get. And we cannot buy a steak with hamburger prices. Thank you. Aiden Soloway.
Tony Savell, the president, and I have several of our members joining me for this presentation. Roger Harris, one of our members, is our vice president, currently serving on the board. Uh, we have Ruth Pace, our community chair, and I'm going to let you come up because she's going to presentation. And Billy Ann Hayes, our scholarship chairman, and Patsy Reinhart, our treasurer. So if y'all would come up here with me. Uh, I would like to present this check to the Cleveland County School Board. This check represents 16,142 volunteer hours that our members donated to our community. These activities can be in education, mentoring, civic groups, church work, health care, and other nonprofit groups. These hours do not represent hours volunteering for family members or activities where members receive money for services. We are working in a paid capacity of our that our state organization determined that the value for each hour is $22.14. We would like to share with you our 2013 check in the amount of $357,383.00 and 88 cents for our volunteer hours. I do regret that this check is not in cash because our members do understand education has suffered many setbacks in funding over the last several years. Thank you for allowing me to share this opportunity with you and this great news. Thank you.
education uh, supports uh, not only our students in learning, but you are trying to be lifelong learners as well. I know the kinds of inf uh, information that you get in the seminars and, and the kinds of topics that you discuss that are helpful to us as staff when you go off and get training on school law and health related matters for students and curriculum instruction and those things that you do. And so they are important to your training. So I appreciate that on behalf of the staff of the school district. Let me thank you for those of you who have been involved in this training this year. I know some of you are new and will get this training as it goes forward. But tonight on behalf of uh, Dr. Ed Dunlap, the Executive Director of the North Carolina School Board Association, I have some presentations to make. I'll read the name and the category of certificate that each of you has received and ask you to stand and receive the certificate. The first is a certificate of merit presented to Roger Harris. certificate tonight and the bronze award goes to Dr. John C. Hammond. favor of the 
motion as stated by Mr. Glover and Mr. Harris. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you. On to consideration of the approval of consideration of the minutes of the February 24th business session. Well, it's a pleasure to vote. Move to approve the minutes as presented. Second. We moved and seconded to approve the minutes of the February 24th business session. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. On to globally competitive students. The first item on this is we're going to hear a discussion and presentation from our math academy, Trotsy McClooney. You don't look like Trotsy. Oh, okay. I didn't see her back there. I'm sorry, Mary. You're taking the glory here. No, I'm not. Okay. This is Larry Corey, for those who don't recognize him. Thank you. Thank you very much. Dr. Hamrick is chair. Dr. Walls is superintendent. And the fellow board persons. It's indeed a pleasure for us to be here with you this evening to share with you the successes of our community math academy. You know, we've been on this journey now for six years. And tonight we're going to share with you where we stand. I'd like to also give special thanks to Dr. Walls for his untiring commitment and support of our community effort. This, I think, is, as we look back in time, proved to be one of the most successful community partnerships that have been launched in our community. We have grown and we continue to grow. Tonight is my pleasure to formally introduce to you our executive director. We have hired Mrs. Tropsy McClendon, who is our executive director, and many of you know her. She's been in education in this community for 42 years and has now agreed to serve our children for the S. Uh, Executive Director of our Math Academy. She comes to us from number three school. So I'd like to present to you the Executive Director of the Community Math Academy. Dr. Thank you so much. Uh, I am really excited. Uh, I was having to withdraw as I retired. <laughs> and my car wanted to go south just on its own. And I wanted to be in it. Uh, so I am excited that I, I continue to have an opportunity to interact with students as well as educators and again uh, board members because we do expect uh, this to be a long-standing partnership for Community Math Academy. <clears throat> Excuse me. This initiative began um, as an effort to improve minority student performance and we claimed it closed the gap. The data spoke for itself. And as we began to dig deeper into what was happening within our school system, uh, we asked ourselves the question, who's responsible? And so we answered the community. It is our responsibility to see about our children and to take care of them. And so our purpose, the purpose of the Community Math Academy to help students develop positive feelings toward math. We can tell our students, as they come to the Math Academy, we accept nothing but I am, I can, and I will. And when they decide, or in a moment they think, okay, I can, we say, you are, you can, and you will. That's our first purpose. And as parents and educators and community partners, we tell our children, even our, even our own children, uh, when they begin to walk, they don't know how, but we say, you can walk. You remember the time when they say, come on, you can do it. You can do it, you can do it. So that's our purpose. And our second purpose is to provide a better understanding of math concepts. And thirdly, to improve the students' math skills. We want them to be ready to in the classroom and be successful. The executive 
summary gives uh, just a brief synopsis of where we are and who we are. We began the academy in 2008. Presently, we have two sites and awaiting a third site, and we'll talk about that. We are very excited about that. We serve students uh, rising third, fourth, fifth, and sixth graders. Students are served in 11 of the 17 elementary schools, and again, as we expand, that will change and get greater. Currently, this fact, we had 120 children. It is held the last, um, it's held three weeks in July, from nine until one. The students get three hours immersed in math. From the best teachers in Cleveland County. We have one hour of enrichment. We feel like that's what we do. What we do is we speak to the whole child. Yes, we want to do that, but you'll see that as we go, that we are touching them in different ways as well. Transportation and meals are provided. Uh, as I spoke earlier, we have certified instructional staff and also technical advisory uh, committee support from our school system. We have a very, very strong volunteer team. Two computer labs, the students have access to high technology, whatever is coming and going. Um, um, Cheryl Lutz and her staff are definitely there to provide that for our students. Uh, we have an investment of 300, now this was last year and it has increased again, uh, but at that point, 300 to $350 per child uh, is what we estimated as we uh, formulate our budget, that's what we're, we uh, consider. Our enrichment programs include the arts, we uh, have a partnership with the Arts Council, we're always excited. The students uh, leave the academy at the end of the day at one o'clock. We van those children over to the Arts Council and their parents pick them up um, in the afternoon. So that is an extension of the day for them and they are very, very excited uh, about that opportunity. We are going to show our performance data in just a few minutes. Um, we'll speak again to that. Students are selected by the Cleveland County Schools I don't select them, our board members don't have any input. Uh, Dr. Boyle and his staff are very capable. The teachers in our school system made the decisions for our rosters. So we don't know who the students are until maybe a week or so before school uh, opens. And the teachers don't see that until we have our first work day. So it's not hand-picked. What we do is we target uh, level one, twos, low threes. We want those students, we want to see them make gains. We want them to move on um, to be successful. All right. We have some strategic initiatives as, as they're doing that. I'll move to, to work on that. Uh, I, I do want to talk about the expansion because we're real excited. We have served all of the zones in our county, three of the zones, Kings, um, Shelby, Burns, and Chris. And this summer, we will expand and we will include Kings Mountain. We are really excited. Uh, and you may wonder why, uh, as we looked at the data again, the greatest need was in the Shelby zone, and that's where we started. We started at the Shelby zone and then expanded uh, to the other zones. So this summer, we will ban a small group of students over to our two sites and include them and we already have uh, a commitment from a church in Kings Mountain for 2015. So we will we will go full speed ahead for our 2015 Academy uh, and we will be at Mount Zion Baptist Church in Kings Mountain and they have agreed to host the site and we have our steering committee already formed. Uh, we will have our second meeting very shortly and there are other community leaders in that area who are willing to come on board and, and make this happen, and they are very excited about that. Um, we have invited all of them as we are planning for uh, 2015 as well as 2014 so that they can certainly be a part of that. We also, one of the initiatives is robotics. Uh, this past summer, we had a team, six, we had 12 uh, fifth and sixth graders who went through the process um, to be a part of the robotics team for the math academy. And the week after the math academy, they uh, attended <coughs> robotics camp at Cleveland Community College. Bruce Matt and his team in the uh, technology department out there did an awesome
awesome job with our students when they built their robot, programmed it, and made it work. Uh, we were just in awe. We, 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 we watched, and, and Bruce Mack is, um, he's an awesome teacher, and he gave the students the manual. You know, they come in little cubes. You look like Legos on them. They're, they're really small. So they have to build it from nothing. And uh, we had one of our teams who uh, built that robot that first day. And Tuesday morning when they arrived, all of the teams, he had taken the robots <laughs> off, put them back in the box, and gave them the manual. And what does that do? It teaches them perseverance. We can do this. And I heard one of the little fellows, and you'll see him later, and he said, you know what we did yesterday? We can put it back together again. So, uh, it, it was such an awesome experience for those students, and uh, we, we were very proud of them. And, and again, we can say we wanted to focus again on science and physics. You know how important that is. And so this summer, uh, we will again take a group of students to Cleveland, to early college, Cleveland Early College, um, for our science and physics version. So we're really excited. That's a new initiative for us. Uh, and so we will uh, hopefully focus on our fourth and fifth graders. Try that. The fifth graders take that science test, and so we're trying to be sure we work with those students and make it age appropriate. It's always a challenge for funding, and so we uh, continue to make that part of what we need to do. I, I'm just going to uh, kind of pass over this next one. It's, it kind of gives you an idea of my board. I do want to mention them. I won't go over all the responsibilities. But Larry Corey, our chair, Ron Harrell, uh, assistant chair, Reverend Lamont Littlejohn, Ron Cherry, Richard Hooker. Rhonda James, Bruce Mack, Haber Holmesley, uh, and myself as executive director. But um, those are our board of directors, and we are working very, very hard to be sure that we sustain ourselves and that we provide the very best for our students in Cleveland County. Just look at the data. Cleveland Math Academy students, 2011. Third graders, we had one student who was a level one. We had six students that were level twos. 19 students that were level threes and one that was a level four. And their EOG proficiency was 74.1. And you see the breakdown by grade level three, four, five, six. And I want to talk about that seventh grader. And you look at that and that looks really strange because we don't take the seventh graders. But uh, we were probably two days into the academy this mother walked in, she said, Ms. McClooney, my son needs to come to the academy. And I said, ma'am, we don't take seven grades. We don't. We don't. And she said, he's failing. She said, I need somebody to help my son. And he was a uh, sixth grader, seventh grader at Chris Middle. And I said, well, let me see what I can do. And she continued to plead, please, Ms. McClooney, please take my son to the math academy. And so we were fortunate enough, and we are very, very blessed with our volunteers. We have a teacher who comes from Camaris County every day for three weeks with volunteers in the math academy. She read about it online and wanted to be a part. And she so happened to teach seventh grade math. And we allowed her to tutor him for one hour. He never missed. Took the EOG and got 100. I mean, he passed it. That's what it's about. You know, we have our rules, but we also have children. Uh, and I have a heart for children. And I told that mother, I said, if you'll have him here every morning at 8.30, she would tutor him from 8.30 to 9.30. And she did. She loved her son, and we loved him, and uh, he is still doing well at Crest Island, and we're very, very proud of him. And you can see the total percentage uh, as we look at our students to be 72.6%. As we compare that to all of the students in our uh, school system for the data for third, fourth, and it, it goes down, that minus 28 looks a little bit skewed, but that's that one student that we have. Uh, the difference in the percentage is 1.8, 5.3. 4.0, and you will see the total 2.6. So we talk about closing the gap. We want it to be closed. And you have a difference when you compare math academy students to all of the students in Cleveland County with a 2.6. Uh, no, <laughs> uh, Tracy's going to come now. This is, we're real excited. This is our 2012 2013 data. Uh, as we have said several times, uh, for 2012-13, we had new curriculum, new tests, new standards. So obviously the percent proficient looks a little differently than the data that Ms. McClenney presented.
35% total compared to Cleveland County Schools black students at 30.9 and then Cleveland County Schools black students minus the Kings Mountain Schools, which is at 30.3. Um, there's a bit of a discrepancy there. Um, and as we anticipate, we target students who are lower performing in math, so we kind of anticipate that they have a lower percent condition. Um, the reason we chose black students uh, is because that is the majority of who attends the math academy. Um, and then, of course, the, the bottom part where we um, excluded the Kings Mountain Zone was because we have not yet um, included them in the schools that send students to attend that academy. So the percent provision um, didn't really paint the picture that, that we had hoped. Uh, so I looked at a couple of other means of data. Um, I looked at quantile data, and a quantile is simply a scale that measures math skills. So the higher the quantile level, the more math skills that student has acquired, or they are performing at, at a higher level of math skills. So we looked at our math academy students, and we looked at the ones who had gained in a quantile score. Um, we looked at the EOG before they attended Math Academy compared to the EOG then after they attended Math Academy. And you can see, um, if we compare that to our other students in Cleveland County, our black students, and then at the bottom, our uh, black students minus the Kings Mountain Zone like we did with the percent provision, we have some areas where our Math, stu math Academy students were gaining at a higher percentage. The data that we really uh, were impressed was when we decided to look into EVOS growth. Um, and I've done some presentations uh, previously with EVOS, and the way that they measure growth is through normal code equivalent scores, the NCE score. So we compared our Math Academy students, NCE scores prior to Math Academy and after Math Academy. And we calculated the average NCE score for our Math Academy students. And you can see that all of their gains, 1.6 for fourth grade, 0.5 for fifth, and 1.5 for sixth, all were positive gains, which in the world of EVOS growth is a very good thing. You want a positive number there. A zero um, indicates exactly one year's worth of growth, so these students gained more than that. And as we compare that to Cleveland County students as a whole, see we've got some slippage there with our other students as a whole in Cleveland County in those grades. So not only did our Math Academy students go beyond a year's worth of growth, but they outperformed our other students as well as far as growth. So they may not be proficient yet, but they are growing at a higher rate than our other schools. Um, the last let me, little... Let me, let me make sure I understand. So where it says 0 0.5, that is an EVOS growth of a year and a half. Is that accurate? Uh, I wouldn't say necessarily a year and a half. Uh, the zero mark is just equal, um, but it's not in year increments as far as like zero, one, two. So, so but zero, it was over, zero is still growth. Yes. Okay. Zero is exactly what that student was expected to do for one year to the next, excuse me, one year to the next as far as growth. Okay. Uh, so this student, that group of students in fifth grade went above and beyond. So that one, and you're comparing them as far as the game with the even. This is all students right here in Cleveland County Schools, right? Yes. So that's Math Academy compared to all students. All students, okay. not just our black, and not gotcha. excluding the Kings Mountain Zone. Those are all students. And the reason that I did that, EVOS is a little limited, um, and I could not pinpoint just right. black students or just uh, certain zones and get that data for comparison. So that is all students in Cleveland. Um, the last little bit of that chart, the EGOS NCE gain, I personally was just curious to see because the top part is an average for all the students who attended Math Academy. So at the bottom I looked at individual students and you can see that all of our grades in our total, 54.7 of the individual students who attended Math Academy had positive gains um, through the EGOS data. So at a rate of higher than 50%, um, it is a positive thing. Um, so this has been the, um, the best comparison that we have had so far with Math Academy. 
um, in, in showing growth to show that Math Academy is making a difference for our students. What is this performance data? What has it done? It helps to increase self-esteem among our students and even parents. Even parents feel better. Um, student attendance is 90% better. Average weekly parent attendance rates for six years has been over 55% and this past summer it was greater than that. It was about 65%. For uh, parents are required if they agree to bring their children to the math academy, they must
children. And she learned this summer what it truly means to be a partner with the school <coughs> and to be an advocate for her children. Thomas. Summer of 2013 was a pivotal summer for Thomas and his mother. Every morning they had to wake up at the crack of dawn to get Thomas to Math Academy. While Math Academy was something that would inevitably help Thomas, it was a sacrifice for he and his mother. Getting up in the morning wasn't always the easiest task.
Pleasure the board on the recommendations from Dr. Fisher. Uh, he's written a letter. If you all approve it, I'll sign it and send it on. I make a motion that we accept this letter and approve it to be sent to Dr. Atkinson. Second. Mr. Orland, Mr. Glover, have seconded. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes unanimously. Thank you, Dr. Fisher. Thank you, Chair. Uh, <coughs> next two items uh, I have requested to be on under our category of innovative leadership. The first is uh, 
not so innovative. It's just to ask our two distinguished uh, state board members uh, to give us a report on their recent meetings last week. I believe they spent most of the week in Raleigh, a lot of the week in Raleigh. Uh, first, I'd like to ask Sheriff Miller to talk to us about NCSBA and their dealings, and then Richard Hooker for the DPI report. Thank you, Sheriff. And, and I'm going to be fairly brief because a lot of what um, we covered at the school board association board meeting, I think then Richard covered that, and then and more or the state school board covered it, um, and also um, a lot of the, the updates that we received at the school board association, y'all have since received through the legislative updates. If you've been reading those, so uh, a lot of that was covered. Um, we did have our legislative update. Um, but two things that, um, that, that jumped out at me um, from that meeting, we did have a conversation with Eddie Speeds, and Eddie is um, one of the two attorneys that filed the uh, lawsuit on behalf of um, public schools in North Carolina for, or the school board association on behalf of the, um, our school system and, and others for the, uh, to oppose the um, opportunity scholarships. And so, he just gave us a brief update on that, but I think you know we had already heard that that um, it had been um, uh, that there is a stay, and so there will not be any vouchers provided to students until the lawsuit is finished. Um, he did say that, of course, as with any lawsuit, there uh, an appeal could be filed, and, and that appeal could take up to a year, and so then that makes the lawsuit go on even longer. But um, right now. That
not only in the several other celebrities, the school board association, nor the national school board association has um, worked with them and they've become celebrity spokespersons for, um, for public schools. And um, that's a um, part of print ad and, and internet ad that, that is out there now. And um, Greg, I can give you all the links to all the um, media tents so that we can also tie in with that. There is no cost Thank you for this opportunity and privilege to represent you uh, on the uh, North Carolina State Board of uh, Education, as well as a member of the Board of Directors uh, for the North Carolina School Board Association. Uh, I didn't realize there was so much work when you received an award, and uh, <laughs> it would uh, double my uh, work and, and visits to tomorrow. Uh, but uh, it certainly is a bother being a board recipient. It's been an honor and a pleasure to serve on the State Board of Education as well as the uh, North Carolina School Board Association. And it's also a particular honor to serve alongside uh, the, who is now the state president of the North Carolina School Board Association, my colleague uh, Cheryl Miller, that gives us two uh, representatives from our local board who are working uh, for you and on your behalf at the state level. Uh, the State Board of Education, uh, what I've done at the uh, put together a package, and I promised Mr. Chair that I'm not going to go through this whole package, but I was trying to impress upon you that I was uh, alert at the meetings and to try and take copious notes. Uh, so in the event time, you feel free to review some of the data. Uh, but today, I have attended all the, the board meetings, state board meetings, starting in February. There are two days uh, each month, uh, both in January, February, and most recently last week uh, in March. In addition, I did uh, attend two state conferences. One was uh, the Emerging Issues Forum, which was a very informative session uh, that is typically sponsored by NC State University and, and Governor Hunt. The focus this year, one of the reasons we attended, many of the state board members, because the focus was on uh, teachers, the great economic debate. Let me talk about the challenges issues, the policy that impact on teachers in North Carolina. Uh, the other conference was just recently one that many of us have attended many, uh, many times is the school board uh, correction, the uh, Close the Gap, that is now called the Collaborative Conference on Student Achievement, which was also held, which was held last week along with the State Board of Education meeting in, in uh, this one was in uh, Greensboro. And uh, again, there was another informative session, uh, which was Spearheaded by the state board, uh, correction, spearheaded by the Department of Instruction. Uh, in my report, I do want to just share uh, a few highlights of what has occurred over the past several months uh, at the state board. Many of the information we have received uh, in uh, some of our correspondence, many of the information uh, you probably heard on the news, uh, but uh, let me just note that some of the highlights. Uh, with respect to the uh, state conference included uh, charter schools, which was uh, very prevalent. Uh, the state board last month approved 26 additional charter schools that now represents 152 charter schools in the state since they had the charter schools. Uh, we also reviewed 10 renewals, those charter schools that were up for renewals. Of those 10, uh, eight were renewed, two were not because of uh, issues with finances, uh, they were not renewed. But that does bring us to date of uh, 152 total charter schools that are currently operating, or will be operating in fact in August of 2018. I 
did not know that there were so many study commissions, advisory boards, uh, uh, focus groups that exist uh, at the state level. Uh, some of those study commissions, uh, of course, addresses the Common Core, digital learning, which is a very efficient effort on the state to try to have uh, our schools uh, on the line to promote digital learning completely by 2017, which is a very efficient endeavor. But there is a study group ongoing with that. There was, of course, the study group that deals with for our three to achieve, and that sort of provided the, the, uh, uh, the approval, the approval that we received in our uh, waiver request. And uh, there were some of those recommendations that we requested in the waiver were part of the study advisory <coughs> group that approved the media assessments modification of summer scale, uh, reduction of passages, and, um, and uh, so that sort of was a good prelude to what we were representing. One of the things I did not know is as you talk about standards and assessments, as I looked at the application for those waivers, figures, 15 LEAs and one uh, consortium, I didn't know there were so many assessments for those educators uh, that you have to, uh, the educators have to deal with. So many assessments as we uh, attempt to uh, find uh, an appropriate, reliable, and uh, uh, suitable uh, measurement to, to determine the uh, success of our students. There is, uh, we at the most uh, recent meeting, uh, it's somewhat divisive, but we just approved, the state board, I should say, just approved a uh, new student achievement level. Some of you have already, already agreed with that. Most of us are now aware that the four levels, level one, level two, is level two, level four. Effective with the last board meeting, there will be a fifth level. You know, so there will be five levels of student achievements in there in those indicators, uh, with the level of uh, proficiency being at level three. And, uh, and, uh, and the intent, the purpose of recommending the five levels was to measure, the, for it to be more precision measuring, you know, the scale of students and their performances and everything. What they will also do is they'll eliminate, alleviate about 11.6% of students who typically would be uh, in position to go to summer school because of their current level based on the, uh, you know, uh, getting a great uh, indicators. So with the five levels, that will eliminate a uh, good percentage of students, possibly less than would normally be in position of eligible to go to summer school, could have done that to go to summer school because of their, the way that they can uh, measure more efficiently and with, with, with a little bit more precision. The state school board is also in the process of uh, revamping their strategic plan. As a matter of fact, the next board meeting that will be held at the University of North Carolina Fieldwood later next month will address. Uh, the uh, new strategic plan that has been recommended and presented to the school board. I would not vote this, but I did make a copy of this to you. And, and, and of course, it would address you know every student in, in terms of graduating globally prepared, you know, to graduate uh, globally prepared for work, for college, uh, or for the military. It would address a personalized education plan. Uh, it would address the fact that every student shall have an excellent it will address uh, every school district has up-to-date financial business and technology system to serve the students as parents and as educators. And it will also address that every student it should be healthy, safe, and responsible. So those are sort of the framework that this new strategic plan will be built around. Other, and again, I will sort of wrap this up, but we talked about the home base and how the schools, some of the concerns and some of the frustrations as some of those things are being ironed out. A uh, big concern is the high state testing. You know, there's a lot of discussion about how students take some of this testing and looking for alternate ways to measure uh, students' performance other than just testing, but that's something that's still been very elusive and currently high state testing and testing still will be around for a while. Uh, the legislative report because of the superintendent and uh, the state board has to report to
to the legislators, so they're periodic legislative briefings, uh, conferences, reports that come out of legislatures, uh, feedback that go to legislators related to certain policies and certain laws, such as the Read to Achieve. Uh, the superintendent's report was pretty comprehensive, and it talked about you know some of the best practices that are going on in the state, her meetings uh, with the legislator, uh, and some of the issues that she has to address as it relates to Common Core, as it relates to digital learning, as it relates to assessments, read to achieving the multitude of job of responsibilities and uh, roles that she has to play. Uh, gives her as the elected uh, official on the state board uh, a massive responsibility. Uh, Race to the top is also a ongoing uh, report that's been presented and they are in the process of preparing a six-month report that will go to the legislature that will discuss uh, the status, uh, what their role is with respect to professional development, and uh, to address some of the untapped money that has not been spent uh, as a result of race to the top grant that has been received by the state of North Carolina. Uh, let me just conclude, I threw a lot of information after I intentionally uh, left out a lot of information is so uh, prolific in terms of information, the preparation and the study that one has to gather and gain in, in, in preparation for these uh, big meetings. But it certainly has been a, a very gratifying experience to uh, to represent at that level, learning the policy that impacts 1.4 million students in North Carolina. So uh, it, it is a great uh, responsibility great honor to represent and uh, in conclusion let me just say that working to ensure all students graduate graduate globally prepared for work post-secondary and uh, for the military is an awesome responsibility and I look forward to maintaining an active presence at the state level supporting the vision and the mission of not just Clinton County School but the vision and the mission of the State Board of Education and uh, but certainly continue to represent this community this new system to help move students forward on behalf of public education. Let's share that with you with the board. Thanks. Now, does anybody have any questions? Richard or Sherry? If not, we'll go on to the second area of innovative leadership. And this is what I've observed uh, in the past uh, couple of weeks in looking at our timeline for our superintendent search. Therefore, I'd like to open some suggestions up, or mention some suggestions, and open it up for a discussion. Uh, I'll give you a little background. Uh, I was in on the previous uh, superintendent search. Uh, I don't think, I think we can improve on that a bit, but I think there were some good things about it too. And I looked at the timeline, zeroing in on April 28th through May 2nd. The meeting, the closed meetings, the initial interviews, and to select finalists and final round of questions. That's a five-day five work week. Uh, I think, and I talked to uh, Allison and Scott and uh, Molly, and uh, they are willing to work with us if we decide to make any any changes. Uh, Allison said it was a factor for some uh, applicants in trying to get away from the good applicants. Work week to come, uh, and I, after thinking about it, proposed to uh, make a suggestion to consider uh, interviewing our applicant, our initial interview applicants, on April 26 uh, and 7. That's a weekend. Uh, Allison also mentioned to me that uh, we needed to allow at least a week for applicants to make arrangements to come to the interviews. Uh, actually, when we felt like we probably wouldn't have much spring break, we discussed uh, moving the uh, April 21st meeting to April 22nd, but even that, April 21st, would not have given a week through April 28th. So also going to suggest that we consider moving back a week since we do have spring break now uh, to April 16th or 17th for uh, that uh, 
meet closed meeting on applications to choose first round interviewees and to select questions. Uh, that would give them more than a week to uh, make their arrangements. Uh, it would make no difference in we receive the applications, uh, although I think it could be expedited in some manners. But, uh, I'm throwing that open for discussion. I tried to talk to everybody individually, except I couldn't get the right number in Baltimore, Maryland. Uh, one member is up there enjoying Maryland crab cakes and his grandchildren. So, at any rate, uh, I'm opening it up for discussion and see what the board would consider. Okay. Thank you. question is answered by why and yes or no or how the answers are by the number of people who do that, the number of uh, people who survey uh, take the survey. And that's the information that we need. We don't need, in my view, that uh, Jack Hammer said yes to X question. We need to know how many people said that. You know, we would like to hear uh, the number of people who are in favor of X, Y, and Z.
I, I didn't think you were, but I just want to make sure that that was that was true that you were. Right. And I'd also like to make a comment that even if we get those applications and we don't feel like we have a good tool, we can always back up the hunt and spend this timeline. Am I correct? Yes, sir. Right. Right. We get there and we go to these interviews.
Second. It's been moved and seconded that we approve this four-year contract as presented by the administration. Any further discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Passes. Thank you. On next to, thank you, Mr. Montford. On next to the personnel report, we've all had that since the act came out. Uh, What's the pleasure of the board? Not 
All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Passes unanimously. On to announcements. Dr. Boyle.